is a, a very new initiative that is just uh, starting out and uh, uh, it's a very exciting uh, uh, proposition which has a uh, huge potential. And um, uh, again, this is a, a, a startup uh, which we're going to scale. We've, uh, we've got a few startups that are a few that have scaled and this, this is an example of yet another one. So just a little bit of, for those who are not familiar with the World Federation of Engineering Organizations, on the top left you have our member map uh, and uh, we have some 27 of the member nations in Africa out of 54 members of WFEO. Uh, uh, we are the peak body, international body of, for professional engineering institutions founded in 1968 under the auspices of UNESCO. And we have some 100 national professional engineering institutions as our members and some 12 in, uh, international and stroke continental in, uh, engineering institutions. Uh, representing some 30 million engineers. And we are the uh, uh, engineering body that represents engineering at the UN, hence this session here this afternoon. And we are the co-chair of the major science and technology group at the United Nations. Uh, the other co-chair is the International Science Council, which represents some 300 scientific unions and academies. So it's the voice of science, technology, and engineering at the UN. Uh, we uh, have uh, always had a commitment uh, to uh, uh, engineering and the sustainable development goals and we made this commitment uh, in, uh, explicitly on our 50th anniversary in UNESCO Paris in March 2018 when we signed the Paris Declaration uh, where we said we were committed to advancing these goals through engineering. And, uh, this was the first time that WFEO and UNESCO came together so publicly in a particular statement, uh, and it's been quite an important one. And underpinning that, of course, is engineering, education, and capacity, the need for more engineers where they need it most with the right skills. Uh, because uh, our firm belief is that skills in science, uh, engineering, techno and technology, and mathematics are key to advancing the uh, sustainable development goals. And we made this point also in the second UNESCO engineering report, which was released in March 2021, where we made specific recommendations again on uh, the need for reviewing the engineering <coughs> education benchmark so that they produced engineers that were capable and had the skills to advance the sustainable development goals uh, and then to work with our partners to implement those new benchmarks uh, uh, around the world in, in countries where we had a great need for engineers. Uh, I want to just talk briefly about engineering challenges in Africa. Uh, we've had a lot, we've heard this afternoon of some of the challenges in uh, infrastructure, but Africa in particular is, uh, has some particular uh, needs, uh, uh, pressing needs that as engineers, I think we have a, 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 a role to address. Of course, the greatest challenge is uh, sustainable and clean water in Africa and uh, 2.2 billion lack uh, safely managed drinking water. And we saw this this morning with uh, Professor Josevier's presentation. Access to electricity is another big area. Uh, 675 million people still live in the dark and four in five of them are in sub-Saharan Africa. And in transport, again, we see the, the gap uh, is, is greatest in sub-Saharan Africa for, in, uh, for sustainable transport. And again, mobile telecommunications, uh, especially access to 4G networks, we see a big gap in sub-Saharan Africa. But the biggest challenge, of course, is climate change, and Earth is being at the tipping point. And what we need is deep, rapid, and sustained action to, for, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, we need to reduce by 43%, uh, it's estimated, by 2030, and to net zero by 2050. And if you look at the progress with the SDGs in Africa, uh, some of them have, in fact, gone backwards, as you can see here, uh, uh, in terms of climate action, and there's been very little progress in some of the goals. And, uh, and one of the reasons, it possibly, is the lack of engineers. So we see here, the number of engineers uh, 
uh, here per 100,000 of population ranges from around 580 to 18 in Malawi. Uh, and there's a positive correlation between GDP and numbers of engineers. The more engineers, the higher the GDP, and the higher the quality of infrastructure. As you see here, infrastructure and GDP is positively correlated as well. So you can see that engineering is an underlying factor, very much so. There's also a great need to retrain engineers for the new energy transition and for the new technologies. Uh, you know, and so we're going to see a decline in demand for engineers in the coal, oil, and gas sector, and an increase uh, in other sectors, especially in power generation related to renewable energy. I've done, I've got here an, uh, an attempt to look at the global gap in engineering. And in fact, this doesn't do justice to what the, the problem we are facing. So generally in developed countries, uh, they have, there are about 1,000 engineers per 100,000 of population. And the, these numbers are uh, derived from a range of, from 2019 to 2022, so, but uh, they are relative to the GDP of that period. So USA, Germany, uh, Australia's got some gap, uh, you can say they have about 100,000. France also is about 100,000. UK has some gap, but UK has a high number of technologists. But then you see the numbers declining in Philippines and Malaysia, um, which who might, you might call MDC, middle income countries. And there the, the ratios are between 500 and 600. You see in Brazil, it's dropped to around 400. South Africa, it's around 450 and the lowest is in Sub-Saharan Africa. And the estimate, you know, these are major regions of the world. Um, you know, I'm showing you Philippines and Malaysia as a proxy for Asia, I'm showing you Brazil as a proxy for um, uh, South America. And, um, and I'm showing you South Africa and, and the S South African region, not the whole of Sub-Saharan Africa, showing you the gap there. And uh, I estimate that it's, our gap is 50 million engineers now and growing. So we have a huge job to do. So this is where the Africa Coalition comes in. So we have come together with a number of partners and uh, you can see here uh, the logos of the partners as of uh, today. Uh, we've got uh, uh, the Food and Agricultural Organization. We're in conversation with them to have an MOU. We have MOUs with the Office of Climate Change Education the International Center for Engineering Education. Both these are category two UNESCO centers. So they've got the UNESCO logo with them. Uh, so we've got uh, other, uh, we've got another category two center in Kumasi, Ghana, which is based at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology called TCC. Um, uh, so we've got FAO, our international partner, Young Engineers uh, Committee, uh, Royal Academy of Engineering, and I welcome uh, Claire Mobley, who's here from uh, the, who's the international manager, Global Infrastructure Anti-Corruption Center, the long-term partner of WFEO, International Network for Women Engineers and Scientists. So, so these uh, uh, are the partners that have come forward uh, to answer our call for projects. This coalition came about as a result of the inaugural Africa Day, uh, which was held this year on the 2nd of May to, uh, to 2023 at the United Nations on the sidelines of the UN uh, Science, Technology, and Innovation Forum. The forum was intended to showcase what can be done to accelerate sustainable development uh, using science, technology, and engineering. As a result of the forum, the member states, the ambassadors there from Morocco, Ethiopia, and Ghana <coughs> decided to form a coalition. Sorry. And this is a multi-stakeholder interest group where Africa member states can share experiences, resources, and practices, and also address uh, look at what, be aware of what's happening in other parts and pick that up and scale it in their own states. So we will identify, refine, incubate, incubate and a scalable international action and cooperation for science, technology, innovation, and engineering for SDGs in Africa. 
So here, uh, again, you see uh, uh, WFU has been identified as a strategic partner of the coalition and will coordinate relevant projects in engineering. We see here on the right, we, have, we are here with Her Excellency uh, Motu Joini, the ambassador of South Africa, who chaired this session with Dr. Guna and myself. And you see here Ms. Isfahan Elwafi, the chief scientist of the Food and Agriculture Organization, who as a result of that forum has also agreed to work with us. We called on all our standing committees to put in proposals. We called on our partners and our members, and we're continuing to grow this coalition. So uh, uh, we invite, again, all interested members who have projects and wish to scale them to, to, to contact us and be part of this important project. Um, we have projects that are already in flight that are, can be implemented immediately. Um, so young engineers have a lot of uh, professional development, webinars and so on, so they've stepped up. The WFU Academy is an online training portal that we've already established and we can scale that up. It's already established. FAO, the Federation of African Engineering Organizations, the continental member of WFEO in Africa, has provided a proposal for implementation of re renewable energy projects, but it requires significant funding of $10 million. Uh, the Office of Climate Change Education has put together capacity building for climate change education through a project called African Regional Re Resilience Initiative on Climate Education, ARIS. Uh, and they're looking for US 300,000. And again, we've done a project with them in Mauritius, uh, which has been delivered very successfully. Um, as I mentioned, uh, TCC at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in Ghana uh, provides training for engineers and technologists and have put forward six projects to, with a total uh, a requirement of funding of 3.1 million US dollars. So we don't have funding, but they put the projects forward. They do have facilities for training. Uh, the Global Infrastructure Anti-Corruption Center has developed some training programs and uh, is, is ready to provide these in Africa. Uh, the International Center for Engineering Education at Tsinghua University has put forward a very interesting project for capacity building for African highway operations. Um, stage one has been established and is in progress. Stage two and three require about a million dollars. The International Network for Women Engineers and Scientists uh, have put forward a project from their African regional network called Empower Africa Plus to advance women in science, innovation, and entrepreneurship. But they're also looking for funding and the Royal Academy of Engineering is looking to scale uh, projects similar to what they already have implemented over the last few years called Africa Catalyst. Um, and that's to be confirmed, that's a holding there. So this, this is really to give you an idea of, of what we're planning to do. And um, the role of uh, WFO will be to coordinate uh, these projects. We're not going to deliver and we don't have funding. We will give you the opportunity to uh, talk about uh, your project, uh, connect with member states, and if funding comes forward, well, that, that's terrific. Uh, we will um, have regular meetings to look at how you're progressing and report on that to our members and to the United Nations. Thank you.